Father, tonight we just thank you for your word. We thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. And I pray even as your word goes forth this night that you will touch every hungry heart and every life that has come. Thank you that signs and wonders follow your word. Thank you for all that you've done these past weeks. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for all that shall be done in the days and weeks and months that lie ahead. We see America ablaze with the glory of God. And I pray even tonight that you would touch every hungry heart and every hungry life. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. How many of you know, how many of you here tonight know anything about bees? Buzzing bees. Let me see your hands. All those that know a little bit about buzzing bees. All right. My uncle used to be a honeybee farmer. And as a kid, I would go and watch him, you know, as he'd get and prepare the honey. And one day I walked out there and there he was with two hives. And I saw him doing the most amazing thing. He was standing over the two beehives with Johnson's baby powder. Now, I'm not kidding you. I'm serious. And sprinkling baby powder over the two beehives. The masses of bees all around. And he's putting baby powder on them. I thought, imagine the taste of the honey. And I wondered what he was doing. And, and then he said he had taken a queen bee and then taken these two small hives that couldn't really make it on their own and wanted to join them together. But if he put them together, they smelled differently. And so they would start to fight each other. And what he did was he sprinkled them with baby powder and then they got so busy cleaning themselves. And when they finished, they all smelled the same and they just come in and help the queen and they become one big hive. And then somehow, I don't know how God's going to do it, but I just think <laughs> that God's going to just get all these little halves all over the place and sprinkle some Holy Ghost Johnson's baby powder and people are going to get so full of the glory and on the floor under the power of God as they're cleaning themselves. You've got an Episcopalian, a Baptist, a Methodist, a Church of God, Assemblies of God, and they're all drunk on the new wine, the Holy Ghost, and they couldn't care less. Yeah, then they come. We're going to take notes at Brother Brown's meeting. <laughs> and if you go and look over the shoulder and see the notes, you see this. Point number one, how dumb can you get <laughs> and still breathe? <laughs> Point number two, you ugly thing. Point number three, have a double dose. Point number four, get him, Lord. It's there, it's on the notepad. <laughs> Give it here. Give it here. Give it here. Leave it. Get him.
Uh, it's there, I told you it was there. I mean, want to know what he wrote on the fat. <laughs> Baby powder. <laughs> now here's something in, here's something that's interesting. On the day of Pentecost, <laughs> the Bible says they were all with one accord in one place. And then of course the Holy Ghost fell. Now, People thought that they were drunk. <laughs> Peter even stood up and said, these are not drunken as you suppose. not drunk as, as you suppose. <laughs> but this is Johnson's baby powder. <laughs> Come here, sir. Here. I don't know you, but I saw you sitting there. What's God doing for you? He's really been touching me the last four or five weeks since I've been coming here. <laughs> I went home to call my wife one day in satellite beach to tell her what happened here. <laughs> and I couldn't talk. I just started laughing. But that was the first time I got <laughs> at home. <laughs> Do 
Do you understand now why I have some difficulty speaking sometimes? I noticed. <laughs> it's real, isn't it? I Absolutely. Mean, you're not making this up, are you? <laughs> Huh? <laughs> the, the Lord healed me alcoholism during this too. And now you're drinking the new one. Lots of Isn't it better to wake up with no hangover in the morning time? <laughs> If you'd have known that you could have got this high on Jesus, you wouldn't have to waste it all those years, hey? Huh? Yeah. But you know what? God says he's going to restore back to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the caterpillar, the canker worm, and the palmer worm. God will restore back to you. Hallelujah. And that yesterday is gone forever, but this is a day of new beginnings. A day of new beginnings and God says he has his hand upon you and your whole family and you will tell of the wondrous things that God has done all the days of your life. Excuse me, lady, can you see a change in him? Yes. Are you happy? Yes. <laughs> Very happy. The first time I didn't know what's going on and I just... I'm not just used to it like this. <laughs> I wasn't comfortable at all. And my husband just, did, he gets so excited. He said to me one day, you might think I'm crazy, but I'm going to Lakeland. I says, well, where, where are you is, from? We're from Salai Beach. Where's that? There's a Cocoa Beach from South. And I said, well, what is a Lakeland? He says it's a church. <laughs> Somebody say it's a, a brother Rodney Brown, and uh, he received so much joy. And, and I just saw the TV, and I want to go over there. It's okay. And I says, Oh, go ahead. And so he came over here, and uh, he he didn't call me. He didn't call you. He didn't call me. <laughs> and it was one o'clock in the morning. One o'clock in the morning. And I was worried. You were worried? Yeah, and he called me. I want to talk just gone out on the town again. Well, I didn't know what was he's doing. Yeah. And he says, uh, um, he says, uh, I'm at church. I said, what do you mean, you church? It? I said, what church? And he says, uh, <laughs> Lakeland. He says, I believe or not, he says, church is still going. I haven't gone to the bathroom or nothing. I didn't want to leave, he said. He says, can I stay here again next morning? And I said, oh my gosh, go ahead and stay. And so he's, he didn't call me all day again. And the next day, almost, I guess late again, it, he called and left my business, the phone, you know, saying, she knows where I am, I'm okay. Then he didn't call me again. <laughs> and it was after one o'clock, almost two o'clock in the morning, he called me again. <laughs> this time I really had, and I says, uh, why don't you come some other time? Why do you keep waking me up? <laughs> he says, well, they've never gone off. They're still going. <laughs> so he stayed here till, I guess, three days and night. <laughs> Then he came over Saturday and he got so, I saw him. But when he come home, what did you think? Well, I saw him, he looked so different. He looked so different. So I said, well, I want to go there too. You then, said you want to go uh, there yeah, too? Yeah, and then it was a Saturday you don't have over here. Saturday was off. So I came over. Monday? Sunday. Sunday, we came over Sunday night here. But then I, pe I saw the people acting kind of different. <laughs> they laughed and then very annoyed me and I was very uncomfortable.
They laugh, and in, when you're trying to talk to people, and they laugh and laugh. That really bothered me. But I saw my husband was just... Changed. Yeah. So, then last week, Oh, May 3rd, his birthday. He said, oh, my birthday. You feel okay? And I said, yeah, good. Let's go to Lakeland. <laughs> I said, Lakeland? Okay, so we came over Lakeland. Then five days later, my birthday and Mother's Day. He told me he had some kind of special plan. <laughs> so I got excited. <laughs> then Lakeland. <laughs> and I was sitting right here, and I two couple of teenagers were the laughing bothered me so bad I couldn't stand it. And I, I just was so uncomfortable. And, uh, and then uh, later on, I don't know what happened, I said, well, God, if that is from you, really from you, then I want some too. <laughs> then all of a sudden, you don't even budget. How can you have it? Something like that. I don't know what happened. The what? It's like you don't even budget anything. How can it, I, you will receive? <laughs> and I said, oh my gosh, is that from you, Lord? I want some too. And then I got it. <laughs> I couldn't stop and I left so haunted. My stomach was ache so bad. <laughs> and so we've been talking about, that's all we're talking about. And all the friends think we're crazy in the bed. <laughs> and but so today you did something special and you came to Lakeland. <laughs> Lord, give a double dose and fill up to overflow. <laughs> this is the day of the restoration of the joy of the Lord to his people. This is the day of refreshing to a dry and a thirsty land. This is the day of revival and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. There is only just a beginning, just a foretaste, just a shadow of the glorious move of the Spirit of God that is coming to the earth in this day and this hour. That if this offends you or puts you off, I do not know what you're going to do in the middle of the wave of the glory that's about to break loose in the earth for the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. This is a day of rejoicing. This is a day when God is restoring back to his people the joy of their salvation. The church has come through a crisis hour when major ministries have closed and gone down and people have felt the persecution and, and the attack for the, the, and the reproach of many has been brought upon the church. But God is sending a rain, and it is the rain of the Spirit of God to water the dry land. Oh, that the fruit may bring forth, that it may come forth, that the ground might produce, because the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth. The husbandman is waiting, and the Bible says he has long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. Oh, yes, a little rain can be stopped by covering on an umbrella. But a deluge, no man can stop. And so we've experienced little rains in the past. But the rain that is upon us is a deluge of the glory of God that no man or denomination can stop. For it is the power of God as God is manifesting himself among his people in this day and in this time. Some will stand in opposition. Do not come 
directly in opposition to them, rejoice. Even when they would criticize or persecute you, do not try to justify that which takes place. For those that even criticize and oppose what the Spirit of God is doing, God shall visit in a very real way, and you shall see in the not too distant future, those that the most opposed to what the Holy Ghost is doing shall be the ones greatest for the move of the Spirit of God in time to come. Walk in love and rejoice and be filled with joy for the day is upon us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Suddenly. waiting for the day when right here in America, we'll not just see a thousand saved a week, but we'll see 10,000 and 15,000 and 20,000 saved in one week. This church is just up the way here in Lakeland and has a sign. And the one side says signs and wonders. The other one says Joel's place. <laughs> You just can't believe what it's what uh, it's like to have um, your church turned upside down by God. You know it's God when when uh, <laughs> um, I'm gonna start over. <laughs> You know it's God when? Yeah, you know it's God. You know it's God when uh, your whole church is just turned upside down. And you're turned upside down. I, I have, you know, this revival started in my parish, but I know that where it started, it started with me. I had to get revived. I had to get cleaned out. I had to get remade. I had to get filled with the Holy Spirit and learn how to yield to God myself. When I came here, you were preaching on getting hungry. And I realized that I was not hungry for God. I was very satisfied, if you want to know the truth. I had a great parish, great wife, great children, wonderful place to live. Uh, everything was just terrific. But I realized that I was full of other things. I wasn't full of the Holy Spirit. I wasn't full of God. So I began to get hungry. And the hungrier I got, the more God began to fill me up. And uh, last night, you, you looked over and you said that we'd kind of gotten laid back in the revival, that we weren't getting into this, we'd become observers. And you, and you were right. I thought, you know, you've got to keep hungry for God. You've got to keep hungry for God. And it's going, to be a, it's going to be some work to do for all of us that have been used to having the revival sort of laid out before us every night to keep 
pressing in wherever we go and in our churches. We can't fall back. We can never be the same again. We can't go back to tradition and religion. We've got to keep this revival flowing through us, flowing through our churches, flowing through the people of God, flowing across this country, flowing across the world, because God's renewing his church. He's renewing his people. He's renewing us, and we've got to keep yielding to it. He's not going to just go so far and stop. It's, just, it's not just a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's not just a, an eight-week revival. It's not just for this town or this time or just the people who are here tonight. This is the beginning of a mighty wave that's rolling across, and we've got to keep it going. We can't stop it up. We can never be bound by religion and bound by tradition ever again. We can't worship those things that we've become accustomed to. We can't worship our buildings or the things that are, we're comfortable with. And uh, that's what God has taught me. And when, uh, and my brothers too in these Episcopal churches, some of them are, I'm very blessed. I've had a spirit-filled church since the beginning. But some of them are in very traditional churches. They've been there a hundred years, the congregations. And the building has been there a hundred years. <laughs> and <laughs> well, the congregation seems like they've been there too and uh, let me tell you what they're they're receiving they're having healings people are getting the holy joy and uh, as on vacation I, we visited a historic Episcopal Church in Washington and it was beautiful I mean everything was in place the brass was polished they had a beautiful paid choir Everything was spit and polished. You could make a movie in the place. And I had this thought. I said, you know what? This place is like a wax museum. <laughs> it's absolutely perfect in every detail. And they've preserved a choice piece of history. And it's, you know, it's lovely to come and look at. But there's no life in this place. It's dead as a doornail. And I, I told Brother Rodney at lunch, I said, I know what my preaching theme is going to be. It's going to be fire in the wax museum. Fire in the wax museum. The fire is going to fall on all these wax museums. And either you're going to get remelted and remolded or you're just going to burn up. You're not going to be there anymore. It's all going to burn. That it's not of God is going. It's going. the fire of God. We want the fire of God, not the traditions of men. Get rid of them out of your churches forever. <laughs> it's like the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> Woo! I really think God wants me to tell you to keep yielding. You keep yielding every day. Yield to God. Yield to Him in your life. Every detail. Every detail in your churches. Don't become bound up again. Just keep yielding. Yielding. <laughs> Lord, give a double dose and fill up the overflow. <clears throat> now, these are your friends. Have you known them for a long time? Yes. What, have you seen a change in, in the man? Definitely. What's happened? He laughs all the time. <laughs> was, was he never like that? <clears throat> Excuse me, lady. Was he never like that? <laughs> huh? <laughs> and what about the, the dear lady? What, 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 is, is there a change in her? 
Huh? Yes. And, and what about you? Is this your first time tonight? No, it's about my third. So you stay down in the same place that they? Right. So your special trip was to come to Lakeland too? Right. What do your friends say about this? <laughs> huh? Do you sense God's power as you're standing here right now? Yes. What's it feel like? Mm. Huh? It is wonderful, you know, <clears throat> we had never heard this man's testimony. And <laughs> we had never heard this man's testimony, and if it wasn't that I looked up and saw him weeping, I just felt prompted to call him, and then we heard three great testimonies. All right, come up here and share. You know this lady? Come, come up here. You have visited. This is your first time tonight? Where are you from? Merritt Island. Merritt Island. Come, come up here. How did you get to hear about the meeting and come over? Huh? From the gentleman. From this gentleman. Now, you work for that lady? He called us at the shop and he was trying to talk. We just kept laughing. Had you ever known him like that before? Mm -mm. Were you no. surprised? Because mm -hmm. he's very skeptical. Uh huh. Um, you say he's skeptical? About everything. <laughs> it's real, isn't it? Huh? I always wanted it. You did? Well, go ahead and have a double dump. Go ahead and let that bubble out your belly. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Come here, sir. You nominated her. You better come up here now. You can't fight this, my brother. Come. What's happening to you? Uh, uh. I'm very, uh, normally I'm fairly composed. What do you do for a living? Uh, I, uh, handle, I handle the astronauts' equipment, all their experiments and real high-tech stuff. <laughs> it's real, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Is, that's your wife there? Yes. Are you happy to see her like this? Oh, yes. Does she need that? <laughs> Does she need that? Yes. What about yes, your well, friends? Oh, yes. Have you ever seen him like yes. that? Yes. No. <laughs> Lord, give him a double dunk. Is there anybody else that knows this three? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Never underestimate what the Holy Spirit is doing in the lives of people. <laughs>